Hello there, good to see you. It is the 29th day of June 2017. Many thanks for joining us on KTN Prime. I'm Linda Gutu. Tonight we look at all the top stories for you uh, today, but then there is also a very interesting story that has been done by John Alan Namu. You remember that decision that was arrived at by the courts touching on presidential election results, specifically that returning officers, uh, the result that they will give at the constituency level will be final. John Allen has done a story on that and we'll be asking what the implications of, of this, what exactly does this mean? And then he'll be in studio with me. That is a conversation you want to stay on and listen to. But before we get there, let's take a look at our highlights tonight. Mwenye kupatia ruto pesa zote na njimi wanjigi. Mahali walikosania na muuliza njimi wanjigi ambie Kenyans the truth about William Ruto. Are you clean enough to throw stones at NASA? Opposition asks Deputy President William Ruto. Atutaki ata kona moja iyo jolini. Inani ilikuwa nasema hivi. Power must remain at the center. Jubilee slams NASA's governance referendum proposal. Free as a bird, High Court dismisses charges against Oparanya of a failure to honor Senate, someone says. And a Guinness World Record in the offing for the highest number of people shaved at once at Kenyatta University. Welcome to the program. Thank you for making time for us. I sign language interpreter at the bottom end of your screen is William Sila. Sila, thank you. Right, let's begin on a political note. The Raila Odinga-led National Super Alliance has downplayed Jubilee's claims that the opposition is being bankrolled by graft cartels and disgruntled business brokers. As our political affairs reporter Mrimi Mwangi now tells us from Narok, the NASA leaders want Deputy President William Ruto to come clean on his fallout with controversial businessman Jimmy Wanjigi before questioning Wanjigi's association with NASA. Despite his alleged tag as a top-notch power broker with wide political and business networks, businessman Jimmy Wanjigi's name has not been in the public limelight. But the Raila Odinga-led National Super Alliance on Thursday had to take to a narrow podium to defend NASA's association with Wanjigi, who is said to be among the top NASA financiers. This following Deputy President William Ruto's Wednesday claims that NASA was being bankrolled by graft cartels. Mwenye kupatia Ruto pesa zote na njimi wanjigi. Mahali walikosania na muuliza njimi wanjigi ambie Kenyans the truth about William Ruto. In 2013, wanjigi is alleged to have brokered the Ruto Uhuru Kenyatta Pact. And now, the NASA Supremos want the DP to first explain his connection with Wanjigi before throwing the first stone at NASA. Kiwa nyumbani kwangu, wakaja wanaume watatu, moja William Ruto, wengine Uhuru Kenyatta. Iyo ilikuwa kabla ya mimi kuungana na Raila 2013. Nye kualeta kwangu was a businessman. I call him, I refer to him as a prominent Kenyan businessman. Jina lake Jimmy Wanjigi. Ila mandege tumekuja nayo hapa. Wengine wetu tumekodisha. Wengine wetu tumesaidiwa. Na wafuasi sugu wa NASA. Ile swali ambaye nataka ni kuulize wewe ruto. Na unisikie. Mimi nataka ujibu wa Kenya. Hizo ndege ambao natuambia nazo wao litoa wapi wewe. Tuliwambia tunataka tumelala nja. Wanasema kazi yao ni kula nyama yetu ni kumeza mati. Na walisema hapa narok tu.
with over 300,000 votes up for grabs in Naro County. The NASA luminaries poked holes into Jubilee's performance with a pledge to cure all the economic challenges if elected. <laughs> The source of campaign funding increasingly a closely guarded secret. The Wanjiki NASA connection will no doubt remain longer on the political discourse as the scramble for the August 8th vote intensifies. Muremi Mwangikichia News in Narok. Okay, so the allegations and the counter allegations between the different political leaders forms the basis of a big question tonight on KTN Prime. We're asking you, which side do you think is winning this corruption verbal war so far? Is it Jubilee? Is it NASA? You've listened in to leaders from both sides. Um, the latest, of course, today, have, we are listening in from the NASA side. Which side do you think is winning this war? Let us know. Tweet us at KTN News at KTN Kenya. You can tweet me as well at Linda Gutu. My editor, Noten, would also be interested to know what you think. Tweet all of us, and then we'll pick some of your views and just share them with our viewers before we end this bulletin. So NASA was in Narok. Meanwhile, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto have criticized the proposal by the opposition NASA to amend the constitution and change the system of governance to a parliamentary system. The leaders who are campaigning in Embu County maintained that instead of using more than 20 billion shillings to conduct a referendum, the money should be allocated to initiate development projects. Chris Thairu, who has been on the president's campaign trail, has more. On the campaign trail in Embu County, President Uru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto trained their guns on the opposition leaders for proposing changes to the constitution. <laughs> The leaders claimed that the opposition politicians led by the NASA presidential flag bearer Rilo Diga have ill intentions in proposing for a referendum. The president told Embu residents that his administration has delivered 85% of the promises they made in 2013. <laughs> The local politics also played out in the open as supporters of the incumbent governor Martin Wambora and Maendeleo Chap Chap candidate Lenny Kivuti jeered each other. After camping for three days in Mount Kenya region campaigning, the president is expected to shift gears and focus on the lower eastern region with rallies in Kitui come tomorrow. Chris Dairo, KTN News in Embo County. 
A voter has moved to court seeking to have the opposition national super alliance presidential candidate Raila Odinga barred from contesting the August presidential election. Charles Ndungo Mwangi wants the court to order Education Cabinet Secretary to produce Raila's primary and secondary certificate, including the engineering degree. The petitioner argues that Raila Odinga is not above the constitution and the laws of Kenya and is supposed to respect, uphold and defend the constitution. He has named RABC Chairman of Ula Chebukati, EACC Chairman Eliud Wabukala, Inspector General of Police Joseph Boynet, the Attorney General and the Education CS Dr. Fred Matiangi as respondents in the case. He claims the Education CS failed to provide the public with Raila's true education details. Quite some interesting development there. Now, tonight, senior city lawyers are preparing to present their arguments in court tomorrow in a case challenging their word of the ballot paper printing tender to Al Guerrero. The case by opposition coalition NASA comes eight months after the first printing tender was awarded to the same firm and only 39 days to the elections. Rita Tinina tells us how the country got here and the implications of tomorrow's hearing on Kenya's preparedness for the general election. Some consultation. It will be the second time the High Court will be handling a case over the printing of ballot papers. And in both cases, one firm, Dubai-based Al Gurea, is at the center of controversy. Through an open tender, the firm in October last year won the tender for the printing of ballot papers. But the then Coalition for Reforms and Democracy called challenged the award of the tender at the Public Procurement Administrative Review Board and later at the High Court, which in December 2016 nullified the tender. The IEBC made a second attempt at procuring ballot papers through restricted tender, but the procurement process was challenged even before the tender was awarded. The Public Procurement Administrative Review Board last month ordered for a retender. The IEBC then settled for direct procurement in its third procurement attempt, again awarding the 2.5 billion shilling tender to Al Gurea on the 8th of this month. But NASA, which claims that Al Gurea has close ties with senior Jubilee officials who influenced the award of the tender, wants it cancelled. Well, when when IEBC, IEBC is Dubai. As Jubilee, we want the IEBC to award the contract to, for printing of ballot papers to any company. Ata wakitaka kupatia kampuni ya Spectre, ya Raila Odinga, wapatie. The IEBC is seeking to have the suit by NASA dismissed. In documents filed in court, the electoral body argues that the award of the tender was above board and there is no evidence to support allegations of lack of integrity and impartiality. Al Gurea argues that the firm is different from the one whose officials met President Uhuru Kenyatta and that it has already started printing ballot papers. The IEBC has ruled out the cancellation of the tender. So far, there's nothing. There's just mere allegations being peddled, and the contract has already been signed. The IEBC chair says cancellation of the tender to print some 120 million ballot papers would have huge financial implications and disrupt Kenya's preparedness for the polls. It is now eight months since the first ballot paper printing tender was awarded. The IEBC has had to revise its election countdown schedule with the judiciary taking part of the blame. We are not giving the elections to the judiciary on what, not what to do. But the judiciary should be conscious of the fact that the timelines are now too restricted to be interfered with. The courts are still dealing with election-related cases, including 16 from party primaries, which have seen the IEBC put on hold the presentation of names of candidates from disputed electoral areas for printing and gazettement. Friday, we'll see top lawyers, among them James Orengo, Fred Ngatia, Wawero Gatonye, and Admin Nasir Abdullahi, put their best arguments forward before a three-judge bench made up of Justice Joel Ngugi, Justice George Odunga, and Justice J.J. Mativo. NASA won a case on the tallying and announcement of presidential election results after the Court of Appeal ruled that presidential results 
announced in constituencies are final. The coalition will be hoping for a second election-related case victory as the IEBC hopes for a judgment in its favor. Rita Tinina, KTN News. Following recent series of attacks by Al-Shabaab in Lamu, the state is now announcing possible drastic moves that could include bombing the porous Boni forest, believed to be the hideout of the militants. Coast Regional Coordinator Nelson Maro says deteriorating security situation in northern Lamu could well force the state to go that direction until all the militants are flushed out. On Tuesday, eight people, including four civilians and four officers, perished after their, their vehicle they had boarded ran into an improvised explosive device. Two children out of four who were missing were found yesterday in critical condition. Wale vijana ambao wameingia kwa msitu wa, wa Boni I want media to get this right Wale vijana wameingia kwa msitu wa Boni wanatoka wanatega IDs kwa maofisazi wetu wa serikali sasa hizo wameanza kutarget hata wanafunzi I want them to get this right that the government is going to deal with these individuals head on. Mutasikia yare maneno wa mujawa isikia katika uwa msitu wa boni. And I'm telling you this for a fact. Kama wako uko wanasikia waambiwe. You will see some fireworks in that forest you have never seen in your life. Great, so let's now focus on some very interesting story. More than 2,400 Kenyans this afternoon went into the history books after breaking the world record for the highest number of people shaving at the same place at the same time. In a historic event that took place at the Kenyatta University, the record that had previously been held by Mexico was broken in front of Guinness World Record officials. KTN's Timothy Otieno was there. They would gather in their numbers, determined to add their names into the history books. Here, men, women, the young and the old would unite for a common purpose, breaking the world record for the highest number of people shaving at the same time at the same place. 23-year-old Roy Mutoro is about to shed off his goatee that he has been growing for the last couple of months. The economics student prides himself for his facial hair, but is willing to give up that for the sake of the greater good, having Kenya listed into the Guinness Book of World Records. I decided to participate in this event to try to go from the gangbang group, gang, gang beard group, to the shaved ones. I see how it feels being shaved because I rarely shave my beards. Yet another who rarely shaves is Zablon Wekesa, who was sporting one of the crowd's largest beards. His desires, just like the over 2,000 people who gathered here, is to ensure Kenya makes history. Being part of history when I do things that I don't do often, to me, it's what thrills me. Hey, unajua, uh, to make sure you have to shame off eh? Vinye the whole green. The whole green. The whole green. The whole Hata isi tumeza anza na chini, kama kuhunja hii, rekodi, kufanya kitu ingine badaya. As you know, we are a sporting country. Anything which is competitive, as Kenyans, we feel that we should just be part of it. And here, women were determined not to be left behind. Some would say this appears to be a male event because females don't normally have facial hair. So what will you be shaving? For one... My arms, I'm going to be shaving my arms, very hairy, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, it's not just men who use Gillette, but also women do use Gillette. Few minutes past 5 p.m. and the shaving began. It would take less than 10 minutes and history was made. Kenya breaking a March 7th, 2015 world record set by 2,374 residents of Irapuato in Mexico, who until today held the record for most people shaving simultaneously at the same venue. The event
event organized by Gillette Kenya was meant to not only break a record, but also to educate the public on safer and more efficient ways of shaving. Only 20% of Kenyans shave themselves. This is a very small number compared to you know, the large number of 80% of the people who have somebody else to shave them. And the big statistic says that 60% of men in Kenya fear that uh, they'll get bumps or razor cuts or nicks when they shave themselves. And the statistics we have as a brand is that 70% of the uh, 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 of the nicks and the bands are caused by you shaving in the wrong way. It will now take about four days before the feat can officially be recorded into the Guinness Book of World Records. But until then, many like Roy and Zablon are going to mark today's calendar as the day they participated in something that will remain in the annals of history for a very long time. At exactly 5.40 p.m. East Africa time, more than 2,400 people engaged in an exercise that they hope will break a world record that is two years in the running. Here at Nairobi's Kenyatta University, the people who gathered at this particular dome hope that they will get their names to the Guinness Book of World Record as having been members who shaved simultaneously at the same time, at the same place. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. <laughs> Trust Timothy to bring you some of the most interesting stories happening around. You're watching KTN Prime. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, tonight we're focusing on the fight against corruption. So on one hand, you have Jubilee claiming that the opposition is being bankrolled by graft cartels. And then on the other hand, you have NASA asking the deputy president just how clean he is in terms of the fight on, on corruption. And tonight we're asking you, there has been a lot of back and forth between the two sides. So which side do you think is winning this corruption verbal war so far? Is it Jubilee? Is it NASA listening in to the leaders from from both sides. Who do you think is winning this corruption verbal war so far? All right, so allow me to take a breather. We'll be back in a short while with more news for you.